Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I have the opportunity to work on an oldie. This one is a Fluger 1878 Golden West saltwater fishing reel. It's been around for quite some time. My guess would be the 1940s, based on the wooden handle. And hey, it's still turning, but it's turning tight. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of oil in there. Probably the first oil it's seen in a decade. And we're just going to let that soak. That's penetrating oil. But today we're going to take this reel apart. We're going to show you how it's made, do the service on it, and uh, get this one back to Scott. This is a flea market find from Scott. And you know, we always have a little bit of um, a debate going uh, when you deal with the older reels. It's all about patina and cleaning and restoration, what should and shouldn't be done uh, to preserve the, uh, the character of the reel. And for the most part, you don't want to go refinishing or spray painting or that and sometimes you don't even want to uh, knock off some of the uh, well in this case this is patina on the side but I think it would be okay if we take the salt buildup and uh, some of the old line and that off the center arbor of this reel but uh, you, you can use your judgment on that do you want to take it fishing or do you want to put it up on a shelf as a display piece do you hope to recover some of your investment in a uh, in a reel by doing the, uh, uh, leaving it kind of with the character and preserve, preserving what it's had over time. This reel is called a knuckle buster reel, and that's because there is no anti-reverse on the reel. So when you're letting the reel out, it normally would have gone backwards. This one happens to have a free spool override. So where does the knuckle buster come in play? Well, this reel is normally going to be reeled in like this, the penetrating oil is already working and if you're going to fight there is no drag this is a direct drive reel so without the drag you are the drag so you back pedal the reel to release the uh, fish let it run and then you kind of gather it up again this way beauty of this reel well it's a left or a right-handed reel you can use it either way and uh, that's just kind of one of the nice things about it all right, we're going to take off the exterior parts as we do. We'll crack that nut cap. I want to recommend to you to and ask for you to sign on and uh, subscribe to my channel. And if you do, use the notification button. If you use the notification button, you're going to see the uh, videos that I post when I post them. And well, you'll be able to make a decision as to whether you want to go watch that episode of the uh, thing. Today we're working on an old uh, vintage reel. Tomorrow we might be working on one that just came off the shelf, brandy new, and uh, just kind of do an exploratory on it. Find out how that reel is made and how you would service it. And uh, everything in between. Salt water, fresh water. I do bait casters, conventional spinning reels. If it's made out there, I generally will do it. So uh, I would encourage you to, again, uh, subscribe. I do appreciate your subscriptions and uh, hit that notification button so that you can see what I'm posting. All right, we're going to take the cross posts out. Now there's five cross posts and I'm going to lay the screw on my bench as I take these out. The reason I do that is I want to make sure that the screws are all the same size. If they're not the same size, which is, occurs more than you might think, I want to know where the longer or the shorter or the fatter or the skinnier screws went. In this case, the first three cross post screws are the same. And this is an interesting one. This uses cross posts below with a riveted reel seat. And uh, sometimes you'll find that on reels. Most of the time you won't. You'll find a little bit more solid one. And that's because one of the reasons or one of the issues you would have with the riveted side plate or, or reel seat rather is that it would uh, quite frequently break off. It's just not as strong as a solid piece that you'll find on many reels. Well, this is the fourth or the fifth one. All of those screws are the same. They've all been in that reel for a while, so I'm just going to use a penetrating oil just to coat the threads on that, making sure that it doesn't stick the next time we reinstall. When I remove my pieces and parts, I like to get them off my table, and I use a parts tray. My parts tray is the back of a uh, a fast food container. It's where I go when it's time to reinstall. I know where the pieces are and that's a, that's a good thing to find. This is a very interesting 
free spool setup here, you're going to notice that this whole bridge is going to move in and out when you trip this free spool. So that's engaged, you notice how it pulled it up, and then when it wants to release, it pushes it down and away from your gear, your pinion gear. And uh, that's uh, an interesting concept, and it's been around for quite some time. You will also notice there is a reinforcement on this, uh, this plate. That reinforcement is for the bridge here, the, or the uh, real seat that we were talking about. This is pretty straightforward, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a cleaning here. I'm, I'm not going to, to try and disrupt or disturb the patina on the reel. I simply want to get the old pieces out, and I also want to show you how the reel is made. And uh, I don't want to do much more than that. It's um, like preserving a car. They would expect you to change the oil. They would expect you to, to change the tires and uh, take care of the normal wear and tear type of uh, things that go on with the pieces and parts of a vehicle. But they wouldn't expect you from a collectability standpoint, well, to change out the rims, to, uh, to add some things that weren't part of the, uh, the original uh, work and call it an original car and call it a uh, you know, an updated or a retro mod, things like that. Don't don't call it a car. It's uh, as it would have come off the factory floor. That's about my expertise in old cars. All right, uh, we're going to just clean up the shellac grease on the spool. You're going to notice that the spool gear here is an integral part of the spool. Sometimes these come off, sometimes they don't. In this case, that's a part of it. That's just going to stay that way. What can we do with this um, uh, dried salt here? Well, we can use that penetrating oil again. Sometimes that will dissolve it. And I noticed that we also have a little bit of old uh, cord that's still stuck in that salt. That's probably a good, uh, good time to tell you to change your line on an annual basis. This thing is, probably hasn't had this line changed in a decade or more. And this is what happens. What happens is that line carries salt if it's used in the salt water. The salt seeps to the bottom where that line is wet. And uh, eventually it's just going to sit on that spool arbor. In this case, they're lucky. In some cases, I just did a, uh, a Senator uh, Baja special and a U.S. Senator. And the line's been sitting on there for a whole lot less time than this. And it's kind of eaten completely through the spool. You could use the side of a screwdriver for a scraper, see if you can't get some of that off. But I wouldn't go too far, again, with the condition of this wheel. Just kind of do the best that you can. And I'm, I'm a preservationist, I'm not a restoration. And we're just going to kind of leave it as it is. Scott can decide if he really wants to mess with the patina. I kind of like it like that. And uh, we're going to leave it as it is. All right, on the back side, we've cleaned that up. We're going to go ahead and use some fishing reel grease. I use pen precision reel grease. I uh, don't have a preference for what fishing reel grease you use, but I do have a preference that you use a fishing reel grease. All right, we're going to put that on the back. I'm going to put it on this side of the spool, the shaft. Put it on the other side and check the teeth on the pinion gear now. Make sure that they're nice and uniform and clean. If they're not, go ahead and use a pick or something to clean out the channels uh, between the teeth. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and take the spool, insert it into that end cap, and just put that whole assembly off to the side. Well, let's go underneath then. There's three screws, screw nuts holding the bridge on. We're going to remove those next. This is a good place to tell you to take a picture because, well, things can get messed up pretty easily. And if you have a picture as a reference point, at least you can go back if you've misplaced the part, if you uh, had different screws, if you were wondering on the orientation or any of those kinds of things, those pictures will help. So you're gonna notice on this bridge that you have three separate caps. And if you're getting stuck coming from the one side, try it from the other side. You can usually grip that little slot in the screw and turn it to uh, back it off. And sometimes you might have to use two screwdrivers, one on each side. But in this case, these were pretty cooperative given the 
the time out there. Well, I'm going to keep the, the nut cap and the screw paired for each of these. They've been there a long time. They should be interchangeable, of course, but there's no sense to uh, disrupt in case they got bent or pushed out of shape or something like that. Just keep them together. And you probably saw in the back here that the these, uh, bridge just fell out. That's okay. I'm going to use my penetrating oil on those screws just like we did on the other ones. Keep them fresh. Let it dissolve any greases in there. So here you go. Here's your direct drive wheel. There shouldn't be anything going on here. This comes right off in a pile of grease, right? Well, that's the whole idea behind maintaining these old reels is keep them clean, keep them lubricated, check for damage, and then kind of move on. Well, this is a direct drive wheel with no drag, so you would expect that in this bridge assembly you would not find a drag, which is the case. This is a nice solid, well-machined piece of metal. And we're going to do the same thing we here we did with that uh, pinion gear that was on the spool. You're going to check it out, and maybe I should have showed you if you need to. Go ahead and take a bridge, uh, brush, hard brush, pull it through the teeth to help get any dirt that might be trapped in these teeth. An alternative would be to take a pick, run that through, take a knife, be careful if you're using a knife, run that through, but if you find that there's dried greases and debris in there, go ahead and do that. This is a relatively easy wheel to service because, well, there's just not a lot of moving parts, which is to its advantage, but there is a whole lot of dirt and grease and junk that you certainly want to clear out of there. And I'm using a cotton swab and that penetrating oil to do just that. I'm actually using more than one cotton swab, but you get the idea. And actually these are Q-tips, so I guess I can say that they are Q-tips. All right, just clean all of that debris out and take a paper towel. Wipe that down so it's nice and clean. That old grease it will clog reels. We've seen quite a few of them come in lately, just suffering that condition, old dried grease. Uh, but more importantly, it traps dirt, and dirt is the enemy of a fishing reel. And, well, if you're not careful, that dirt is going to uh, destroy a reel. It'll become abrasive, and it'll wear down the pockets. Well, if you have any questions on this reel, or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one, maybe you're going to find one, maybe you're curious about the age of the reel, Maybe even you're curious who Fluger was. Ernest Fluger and his sons, he had four sons, uh, were real makers. Fluger started the business, and the four sons, actually, there was a, uh, a reel that was made there uh, by them called Four Brothers, which was a sub-brand uh, of Fluger. But at any rate, if you have those kinds of questions, and you'd like to, to explore or get an answer to them, or try to get an answer to them, leave them in a, in a question in the comment section. I'll try and get that answer for you. Well, fairly straightforward. We've taken off the main gear. We've cleaned the bridge. We've lubricated under the shaft. We've lubricated the teeth. We just have to put it back together now. This little slot is going to be filled by the stud on the eccentric gear. Line up the holes. And we have those slots or the caps. So go ahead and put one in the slot. And again, I paired these off the way they came off. So let's go ahead and just put that back. And again, that um, that will also help you to hold that, uh, that piece back here. Let's do this again. Let's pick this one over here for fun. And if you have some trouble on the way back in, go ahead and grab a slot on that side with the one one screwdriver and one on this side. It's a little balancing act. Maybe you need to kind of lightly clamp it in a vise or something to hold it. But for the most part, this uh, if you've cleaned the threads on these, kind of kept them straight up, generally you can get these pretty tight. Just finish up that last one. There we go. All right, if it was being tight, go ahead and put a screwdriver in this side, just like that. Stand it up somehow, manage it, and go around the back and tighten it that way. That can hold it. 
if you have that pen um, saltwater fishing reel, this is not a pen reel, but if you have that saltwater fishing reel tool that has the split for the bail uh, screw, uh, that probably would work in here as well. So what did we do so far? Well, we've removed the side plate, we've cleaned all the old grease, we removed the main gear off the shaft, and we uh, uh, cleaned the, the main gear and the shaft, put fresh grease on the shaft, fresh grease on the teeth of the main gear, cleaned the pinion gear, re-greased. Uh, re so all we need to do now is reassemble and see how it does. And again, we chose here to leave the uh, the patina just as is. You may choose otherwise. That's your prerogative. And uh, I'm going to leave that to Scott for his determination as to whether he wants to go scrub this down anymore. But uh, patina is um, one of those things. When it's gone, it's gone. So be careful if you decide that you want to clean it. There's nothing wrong with cleaning it, but again, in a, in a reel that you may want to collect, sometimes you like to let the reel tell the story. All right, I just want to line these bottom reels sections up here. And we'll just put that in. So. There was a lot of competition in the 40s. Pfluger was one of those that was a common uh, reel maker. He's been around pretty much the turn of the century. He used to compete against Shakespeare. Pfluger had a complete lineup. It had the lineup of the um, freshwater stuff. It had the saltwater stuff. It had round big casters, spinning reels when they became popular. Uh, eventually, Pfluger sold out to Shakespeare. And now Fluger and Shakespeare are part of Pure Fishing. And, uh, well, I guess the names continue. I'm thinking that for the most part, they've probably lost their individual identity and uh, design and that. I suspect they probably have uh, separate marketing teams or something like that. But for the most part, uh, interestingly enough, Fluger President is one of the, the models that everybody enjoys today. Well, President was a Shakespeare model before they, um, the merger, and then eventually, um, in Shakespeare after the merger, they decided to transfer it to Fluger. I don't know, maybe it was, if anybody knows the story, I would like to know it, maybe it was just that the two Ps, Fluger President sounded better than Shakespeare President, I don't know. It's marketing. All right, let's get this last one in. Let's make sure they're all tightened. I like the way that this pulls away to disengage that spool. That's kind of fun. Let's uh, let's see where we are with this. I think we're in free spool right now. I don't know if there's a, a note on here. Probably should be in free spool. Oh yeah. As always, these beautiful reels are just so true. Let's grab our handle. got a square uh, insert. Make sure you're on the post and that you have plenty of room for your nut cap. Nice thing with a nut cap is you can't over tighten it. And this is a uh, U.S. Uh, metric, right? It's pre-war. They didn't go to the metrics. It, uh, this is a U.S. piece and that's a uh, half inch nut for the nut cap. Uh, yeah, we're in free spool. Look how easy that thing turns in free spool. You, well, you know why. It's just the, the main gear sitting in that slot. Let's go ahead and move it over to engage. And again, nice and easy. That um, penetrating oil did wonders on this wooden handle. So what happens with a wooden handle is it swells and it contracts. It's wood. It breathes. And if left uh, without any lubrication or not, it's going to swell up around that, uh, that stud there. And well, that's what you're going to get. All right, well, this is it. This is your Fluger 1878 Golden West Reel found by Scott at a, uh, at a flea market, appropriately in the West uh, Coast, Southern California, the Golden West. And uh, wow, this one's destined to uh, fish on. And I hope that uh, Scott puts some line on it and takes it fishing. 
or uh, has a story to tell about it uh, with the rest of his collection. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, uh, please like it. Again, if, I would appreciate it if you subscribe. If you do subscribe, use the notification button. That'll tell you uh, when I'm posting. And you'll get to see more reels like this and a whole bunch of variety of reels that, well, quite honestly, are not like this. So uh, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thanking all of our first responders and essential personnel for everything it is that they do to keep us safe. And to everyone, have a great week. Enjoy your days. Stay safe. And stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.